Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. And what are we going to be talking about today? Well, today it's going to be very obvious what we're going to be talking about, because we're going to be going over the Lost Belt 7 pre-release campaign, aka Castoria is coming up pretty soon. <laughs> so, let's get right into it. Um, the pre-release campaign should start on the 19th, which should be a day from now, depending on when you heard this, because uh, this should be the 18th when I release this video. And it will last until the 26th of November. In terms of the information, the campaign info is, is that there will be zero AP campaigns for Arc 1 and Arc 2, which is Fuyuki to Solomon and Anastasia to Avalon Le Fay. So basically none of the Epic of Remnant stuff. And there will be a two times great and super suck chance. Um, the chance of getting great and super suck in Servant and Craft Essence enhancements are doubled. So make sure to clear Lost Belt 6 Prologue if you want to get this one. And also if you've been holding in a lot of EXP after Lotto, um, you'll be able to use it on the 19th. Uh, and this should last for a bit here as well because it will go until the 26th. So yeah, makes sense. The comeback login bonus, if you're coming back to the game, you can get 30 cent quartz over 7 days. So make sure to do that if you're just coming back to the game for maybe Castoria or something. Because you quit because you failed last time and you said, screw this game, stupid game, I don't need it anymore. And then you came back and you said, you know what, let me try it again. <laughs> In terms of limited time master missions, uh, clear the Lost Belt 6 prologue, part 1, part 2, and part 3. It will give you a single rare mana prism. Uh, an attack and golden foe, uh, attack and golden foe, attack and HP, golden foe, and 10 sync quartz after you clear part 3. And this will last from the 19th to the 31st, and the claim, uh, the claim period is goes until the January 7th. So you won't be able to complete it after the 31st, but if you're just leaving it there for whatever reason, you have until the 7th to claim it. <clears throat> In terms of missions, um, if you clear one mission... Main quest, Arrow Node, in Arc 1 and Arc 2, up to Tunguska. If you do this at least 7 times, you'll get these rewards. If you've already completed the main quest stuff, then you'll just automatically get these as soon as the the stuff starts on the 19th. It'll be uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 Zen Quartz, a buttload of 5 EXP, and a bunch of Spiriton... Uh, Spirit Vein Stones, if you're still grinding through the story. Which you're going to need them if you want to catch up in time for Lost Belt 7. And now we have the unit info. So there's two units that will be releasing on the 19th. Um, first, I'm going to start with... I'm going to only focus on Castoria. Because she's the one everyone's going to be focusing on. And this is the unit that you should be summoning on. And the other one isn't going to be she's showing up till the 24th. So maybe I'll do a video talking about it later. But if you want a very quick talk about Leonardo da Vinci, here's what I'll have to say. I really like da Vinci a whole bunch. Uh, her kid is starting to show its age a little bit. And maybe it's a little bit too simple. But they have started to give her a little bit more buffs on JP. What With the most recent one, giving you the ability to have 30 crit stars. Which is nice. But she needs a little bit more if she's going to be brought to the modern age. Um, so the cast, that's the quick rundown on Da Vinci. In terms of the craft essences that will be inside this banner, it will be Celebrate Memories, um, which is a quick and buster 10% and a 50% starting MP gauge, uh, MP charge. Brainstorming, which is an MP damage plus 50% and MP overcharge level by one. And then Filler Flower, uh, which is a three star. It's a plus 50 HP each turn and the damage taken is minus 100. So, Castoria. Let's talk about her. So... Oops, let me go back here. Castoria, she is a caster. Uh, duh, that's why we call her Castoria. Her actual name is like Artoria, or is, if you follow the NA side, Altria. Most people don't, because they, um, because they don't like it. And then, <laughs> uh, she has one quick, three arts, one buster, three hits on that quick, three hits on that arts, three hits on buster, and five hits on extra. Her first skill is the Charisma of Hope B, which is an increase to party's attack for three turns and then charging party's MP gauge. 20% attack and 30% to MP, uh, to MP uh, gauge and a cooldown of six. Her second skill is Protection of the Lake A with the name changing after you clear Avalon Le Fay. So make sure to clear Avalon Le Fay if you want to know the name of it or go click it on yourself, I guess. Charges one ally's MP gauge, increases the party's MP generation rate for three turns, 20% to the MP, and the MP rate that is given to all party members is 30% on a cooldown of five. Her third skill 
is the Caliburn, uh, Caliburn Sword of Selection EX. Increases one ally's archer performance for three turns. Increases their damage against threats to humanity enemies for three turns. Grants them invincibility for a single turn. 50% to arts, 50% to threats to humanity, and this is on a cooldown of six. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance A, Territory Creation EX, One's Own Magic B, and after you clear Avalon Le Fay, uh, she gets Fey Eyes A, which is an increase to critical attack chance resistance by 20%. Her third skill is an anti-saber attack damage aptitude because trust no one, not even yourself, or your various selves at this point. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of uh, sabers also, um, on their Artoria versions, have anti-saber on them. And then her Noble Phantasm is the Around Caliburn, the Ray of Hope that embraces you, the Noble Phantasm animation and name changes on the Third Ascension, but I'll let that give it to yourself i guess if you want to hold on to it it's not really i guess it's, i guess it is a spoiler it's a little bit weird to talk about spoilers when it comes to castoria just because we got castoria a full year before her story <laughs> so it's like well, you can't really avoid it <laughs> so her rank a double phantasm it's anti-army increases party's attack for three turns removes party's debuffs at mp level one her attack goes up by 30 percent uh, the attack goes up by 30% to the party, and if you get her to MP level 5, that's a full 50%. And then she grants the party the anti-purge defense for N attacks 3 turns, based on overcharge. At charge level 1, you get a single stack. If you get it all the way to MP level 5, you get 5 stacks of it. You cannot stack it over each other after you use the MP, so if you use a Castoria to give everyone anti-purge, and then you use another Castoria, the other Castoria will not give anti-purge. So if you want to get it stacked, you have to use it when you're using the Noble Phantasm, just as a side note for it. And that is Castoria. Um, she is, hmm, deep think about it. Yeah, I think she, she is the best unit in the game, uh, kind of hands down. Unless you're someone who is super DPS focused, but even then I would still consider Castoria over anything else because Castoria is so good, it lets lesser units be able to do what they can. So, in terms of what, uh, in terms of everything that you can do in the game, she'll be there for whatever you need. Do you need to farm? She's excellent farmer. So good to the point that you sometimes don't even need her for specific farming. You can use a single Zufu on your side and a friend Castoria, and you can grind with a lot of arts units. But double Castoria is the ideal way to go for sure. And some units need the double Castoria. Um, to get fully effective, the reason being that is, of course, a lot of uh, arts uh, noble phantasm are based off of um, uh, NP gains, so it's possible for you to use your noble phantasm and then get a large majority of it back. And in some cases, for some arts units, they will always get 100% back, and you'll be able to just bang, 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 shoot them all off and have no problems. For some other fights, you might have to be a little bit more smart with how you kind of deploy it in there, but she's excellent at it. Um, if you, um, you can use her skills with the 50 percenter and to get up to there or whatever. And if you're ever in a situation where you're like, okay, well, they're at 80%. They actually don't need to get both skills. Let me just use the second skill and then save the last skill for the final turn. You can do that because she's the only support unit, um, of the big three, which is the, the main quick, she's the main support unit for Arts. The other one being the main support unit for Quick is Summer Scotty. And the main support unit for Buster is Koi and Skaya. And the, the two things the other two have is that they give full on 50%. So for Scotty especially hurts. There's no way for you to divide it up. So you say, okay, let me give a little bit to them and then save this for the Ender. There is no saving um, with Summer Scotty. But you can with Castoria, which, com which can come in handy. Handy. In certain team comps, it comes up to me. It came up to me during the lotto that we're currently currently going through, where the arts unit I was actually able to divide out the um, Castoria buffs over time to where they're kind of a little bit more spread out, and it's very nice. Um, especially in those kind of the nodes where you have a main AOE unit and then a single target one, Castoria she won't give them the full 50%, but she can still give 30%. And then if you have double Castoria, it's still 60%. So if the unit who is single target has a 50% starting NP or has the ability to give himself 20% from mana loading and then 30% from one of their skills, that's 100% NP right there. Which is not bad at all. Very good, actually. So she can kind of go in multiple kind of teams for farming. If you need her just for a simple loop, she'll be able to do that very easy. If you want to do a little bit more of a weird, like you're doing a, uh, there's a weird team comp 
kind of to it. She kind of fits in there as well. She can be used in uh, a variety of ways when it comes to farming, which is very nice. She can even, in theory, be used with Quick just because she gives 50% NP and she gives them NP generation rates. You kind of you kind of use her there a little bit too, but of course, you would still want to use two Summer Scotties. You'd probably just bring her in as a third just to make sure that they are able to use their Noble Phantasm and stuff like that. But I digress. In terms of challenge quest, she's amazing at it. Her third skill does give invincibility, so it can kind of feel a little bit awkward when you're going for the pure DPS push and you're just like, nah, let me uh, give my DPS double invincibility, whatever. I don't care that it goes away. But in certain challenge quests, you can give it to a unit and you can feel a little bit bad about wasting the potential 50% from arts and the potential threat to humanity damage. But at the same time, invincibility can save you for long enough to be able to use her own Noble Phantasm, which gives anti-purge defense, which um, I didn't explain it because I only explained how the stacking works. But anti-purge defense is just better invincibility. The only way to get rid of it is to attack into it or remove buffs. Those are the two ways to get rid of um, purge defense. It's that strong. It's insanely strong. Um, it makes her insane for challenging fights because not only can she make it so that with a good amount of overcharge, which it's very easy to do with a lot of arts units, especially if you are um, using Castoria and then using... Sometimes even for my team builds, I use the Noble Phantasm on my DPS first because I know that they're going to break down the bar. And then on the second one, I use Castoria because I have the ability to give anti-purge defense. And sometimes I don't even need to do that because... Maybe I'm using a Lady Avalon, in which case I can then use Lady Avalon and I can get it there. So I can do all that from MP level 1. It'd be nice if I had her MP level 5, and obviously this 50% attack can come in pretty huge if you got there. But even at level 1, you're able to take advantage of this and use this and be able to save yourself in so many times. Like the amount of times this has saved my ass or made a challenging fight that me and my brother are doing on for a video... And the only reason we were able to win was because of Castoria. I want to say in over maybe 90% of the videos that we've ever done on a challenge quest and we've been able to win it, 10% of that is because of Himiko. No, like 9% is Himiko, 1% is random team build that somehow worked, and then the other 90% is just we used Castoria on the team. She's that good at um, challenge quests and she's that amazing at it. Um... And also, this ability to remove party debuffs can just straight up nullify a lot of different, like, fights. <laughs> like, if you're in a fight where they're like, we're gonna give you, like, 10,000 curses, will you then use Castoria? Let me just remove all that real quick. And it's like, oh, well. Unfortunate, I guess. GG. And then you go in there with your DPS, and they can kind of just get completely destroyed by them. So I, I really do think Astoria is as close. If not, is, if you want to have a semantic fight over if the best unit should be a DPS versus support, I will lean in favor of the support, and I will understand if you are someone who's not like, well, you need someone to actually kill. It's not like you can just stall the game forever. Which, by the way, there is a team which you can use a Castoria, which stalls the game forever and does not use a DPS that can go up to 1,000 turns if you so wish. I would never play like that, but there's definitely is something there. So either way, I do see the thing of a the val the validity of a DPS unit um, being seen as a number one. But she's definitely the number one support in my eyes. The only other one that comes close is Oberon, and that's because he can give seventy percent NP charge. And his final skill is a big gambit, but he can give enough damage to a lot of units that makes it so that some. Some fights become way easier when you're using Oberon if you are maybe not hugely invested in a lot of NP stacks, for example. Like, um, obviously I don't need Oberon for my le MP level 5 Summer Ibuki, but someone who has her at 1, maybe. It's like, okay, let me go here. So those are the kind of ones I, I go view in my head. And then from there it's like Vich and then it's Summer Scotty. But I need to use Summer Scotty a little bit more. And I fear now that I've gotten people to be angry at me. So just don't take my rankings as a real thing. <laughs> Point is, I see Castoria as the number one support unit in the game. If you have her, she's excellent in absolutely everything that you can do. Over the years that I've had her, I have never once ever felt like she failed me in any kind of capacity. She has st stood the test of time. It doesn't feel like when it was with Merlin, because I was there for the early Merlin meta where she, it was so like you either had Merlin or you couldn't do anything. 
um, and everyone was super crit focused, and it it was honestly very sucky for me. I never liked the Merlin era, but in terms of Castoria being the number one unit, I loved it. Um, mainly because it felt like I could still use the other ones, especially once they introduced Vich, and now with Summer Scotty, it does it definitely does feel like well, if I want to go pure damage, um, I got Buster for me. Do I want to do a little bit of funny quick stuff? Then I can go quick. But if I just need someone that will always be there, old, reliable, I need to win this, I need to come in here, I don't want to think, I just want to grind real quick, let me set up a team, Castoria will almost always be there. Maybe with some of the other ones I have to think about it a little bit more, but she brings a safety to mind where I say like, well it doesn't matter what I do, because as long as I have her, and I have a unit that can be used in some kind of capacity, then I'll be perfectly okay. So, with that being said, um... What if I fail to get her? Is it the end of the world? Should I uninstall the game? Well, if you feel like you need to uninstall the game, then you need to uninstall the game. But thankfully, she does show up a decent amount over the years just because she's that good. I believe the next time she'll show up for NA is going to be next year. A uh, year from now, she'll show up again with um, with Morgan for the 3,000 day anniversary summoning uh, campaign. She'll be a part of the GSSRs like she always is. Um, and then she'll also be a part of the Spring New Master campaign, and then she'll also be a part of the, um, the Download Celebration campaign, which brings back every single Download Celebration that ever happened, and Castoria has had a couple Download Celebrations. So if you do miss out on her, it's not going to be a situation like Broodhilder, where she disappears for two years, or Arjuna Alter, where he disappeared for, like, three years or so. On JP, he disappeared for three years, but on NA, we got him back a little bit quicker. <coughs> you don't have to worry about that too much because she will show up again and if you had the ability to like start saving up like saving up tickets like what i do for summer which is save 300 tickets over the years and then just go crazy and summon for them when the time comes you could definitely start planning at any point to do that um if you have enough stuff to spare i would definitely say go for her because there will be plenty of units in the future especially if there's a unit in the future that you're super interested in using if they're an arts unit it's almost guaranteed that you should get Castoria because that's going to be their main support one. So if you want them a maximum power, you can kind of go that way. If you want to go a little bit more of a low rent kind of way, like I said, there is ways to grind with other units like using Zufu or maybe even Waver in some cases with a lot of other dudes and you're perfectly fine there. Like there's ways around using Castoria. So if you're ready to go for her and you're ready to go for it, I say go for it. Um... I assume a lot of people have been waiting, and based off of the comments I've received, there's plenty of people ready to go for it, and I wish them the best of luck. Is there a negative reason why not to summon for Castoria? I don't know. You'd have to really force it. Like, if you hate Castoria, I guess don't summon for her. Um, if you already have her, like I do, I don't need to summon. That's why there's not going to be a summon video with me and my brother. Because um, we both already have her, and we're both perfectly happy with her at MP level 1. Um... I always felt like the only reason to get MP level 5, um, I understand there's some people who get it for like the power of it. I never go for power when it comes to MP level 5. If I'm going for multiple MP copies, it's because I like the unit itself. Um, and so that's always my creed when I say it. And even though I like Castoria, I like other units uh, just as much or more than her and I would prefer to have them. And for me, that's Cuckoo, who is coming in uh, after December. So I have to save up as much as I can. So not going to be going that way so that's another reason why you wouldn't summon for her a third reason you just literally just you don't have it you don't have the means to go for it and there's nothing wrong with it just don't go for it there will be some same course related to the event so if you want to do a couple single summons go ahead you never know you could always get them that way but for the most part don't don't go breaking your bank yeah, don't don't feel like you're missing out on someone because like i said she is going to be back and because we play the na version of the game you can plan around it. You can eventually get to the point where you can save. That's what I did. That's what I do. Especially with a lot of units that I like. I save and I wait. And, and yeah, it takes a while. But thankfully, Castoria is like one of the most future-proof units out there that exists. I cannot not, I cannot imagine a world where Castoria gets power crept. Because even in that world, she would still be insanely good and be used with the other ones. They would have to... And they would have to give, like, an Oberon-level, like, crazy buff. Where it's specifically to arts, and it's, like, it gives 30% attack and 40% NP and 70 crit stars or something. Not 70. Like, 30 crit stars on skill 1. On skill 2, it's 30% NP and 50% NP rate. 
there we go. And then on third skill, 50% arts, 50% uh, threats to humanity, 50% bonus against dudes who look at you wrong for looking down the street, 50% to anyone who is super into animal husbandry. Like, it would have to be that level where they would have to go out of their way to specifically say... Castoria doesn't exist anymore because they've released other arts units since before her like for example Lady Avalon They just do stuff different from Lady Avalon uh, Different from Lady Avalon different from uh, Castoria because obviously Castoria is not really super crit focused so That's what Av Lady Avalon has so she has something different and she has a new mechanic that Castoria does not have and they work perfectly together. There's no problem with using both of them. You'd actually would love to use both of them. Same thing goes for Tomomo, where Tomomo is a little bit more focused on defense and, like, stalling the game. And, yeah, Castoria can help with that a whole bunch for sure. But if you're looking for a specific unit like that, like, you want to use them for that. Like, Zufu is a free-to-play option, and there's no way in hell that Castoria can ever be a free-to-play option. <laughs> you see what I'm saying here? She's so well-built that they would have to destroy the game. <laughs> If they wanted to kill Fago, then yes, they would power creep Castoria to the point where they would say, like, hey, let's get someone else up in here. Which, who knows, maybe that happens someday, but it's not ha it hasn't happened yet, man. It's been, like, what, four, 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 four years? Four years, almost? Pretty close to four years. Um, yeah, because she was the, she was an anniversary unit. Let me see, third was Scotty, and then it was Castoria. So yeah, she was here on the fourth year. So it's been a lot of years with Castoria, and she has just never really faltered in any kind of capacity, and I don't really see the need. I only ever see it happening at some point. It's not like Merlin, where they had to go out back and shoot Merlin because he was too good. Uh, and then they finally made him, they buffed him to the point where like, all right, we shot him a little too hard, let's revive him a little bit. Castoria's just that good. I'm going to keep going on and on. At this point, I think this is like the fourth or fifth video I've had where I've talked about Castoria, about how good she is. There's plenty of evidence out there. If you don't if you don't believe me, literally anyone will tell you that. If anyone is telling you that she is bad, they're not good at the game. That's how... And I don't like taking strong, strong stances like that, but straight up, if someone says to you, she's not good, which is different from being overrated, it's a different conversation, which I also would not agree with, but I would have to say they would act actively be wrong. That they would they have no idea what they're talking about. And you should not listen to them. So best of luck if you go for her. Feel free to tell me. I'll probably have a video out at some point. Uh, probably not because I'll be doing a lot of challenge quest videos at that point. But that's the end of this video everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Especially if you listened through all that. A lot of that was just me saying damn Castoria she good. Um... <laughs> Thank you very much for making it this far. Uh, you can, as, as always, if you want to support the channel, leave a like, comment, subscribe. It does help a whole bunch. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Best of luck to your summons, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.